the white coat. I think we can all attribute the strong association of the white coat to the physician. But how did the white coat become such an iconic symbol of the medical profession? Well, interestingly enough, the color of the coats worn by physicians in the early 1800s was black. This actually made practical sense because black could easily hide blood and other stains made by the bodily fluids. Black was also the color of formality and authority and thus commanded the respect of physicians who deserved it. Further, seeking care from a physician during that era was often done as a measure of last resort and so death was frequently close at hand. And the physician's black attire therefore spoke to the solemn nature of the visit. During the late 1800s, the white coat, which was traditionally worn by scientists, started to become the new symbol of the medical profession. Now this was due to several events that forever changed the way of thinking of the medical establishment. Around 1865, Dr. Joseph Lister first used antiseptic techniques in surgery after reading a published paper on the existence of microorganisms by a French chemist named Louis Pasteur. And so incorporating this new knowledge into clinical practice, Dr. Lister applied antiseptic chemicals to wounds and noted a dramatic decrease in the incidence of gangrene. His contributions thus started to move medicine from unproven medical practices and remedies to the realm of science. The second event occurred in 1889 when an artist by the name of Thomas Eakins painted an artistic piece to honor a famous anatomist and surgeon on his retirement from teaching at the University of Pennsylvania. The surgeon's name was Dr. David Agnew, and he is captured in the historic oil painting, performing a mastectomy in this medical school's viewing amphitheater, wearing a white coat, with all of his medical assistants and physicians also wearing a white coat. So now doctors wearing white coats slowly became part of popular culture of the time. And one last event I will mention is the publication of Sir William Osler's textbook of medicine in 1892 that officially portrayed the practice of medicine as a true scientific endeavor. It is because of these developments that have contributed to the borrowing of the white coat from laboratory scientists to medical doctors, associating doctors with purity and cleanliness. Now fast forward 100 years and we find ourselves in a very interesting position. You see, over the past two decades, the white coat has become a hotly debated topic with regards to its capacity to harbor bacteria and spread microorganisms. Evidence has clearly shown that pathologic bacteria can be isolated from the sleeves and the pockets of doctors' white coats and thus suggests that white coats can act as a vector of transmitting infections amongst our patients. Quite the ironic turnaround to the history I just previously shared. Fortunately or unfortunately, there is no conclusive evidence that doctors' white coats actually increases infection rates among patients. But despite conflicting evidence and the objections of many doctors, the National Health Service in England implemented a bare below the elbow policy to all workers in the hospital system 10 years ago. Well, in 2013, there was an interesting study done to assess patients' preferences for doctors' attires. This multi-site observational study was initiated by the Queensland School of Medicine and the Center for Health Research in New Orleans, Louisiana. The study showed four images of the same male doctor wearing four different outfits. The first image was the doctor in professional attire wearing a white coat. The second image was the professional doctor attire with sleeves rolled up above the elbows without wearing a white coat. The third image was the same male doctor wearing surgical scrubs. And the fourth image was the same male doctor wearing a white coat over the surgical scrubs. Now the results may seem predictable to some, and indeed, 
It was the first image of the professionally dressed doctor in a white coat that garnered the highest preference at 65%, followed by image four with a doctor wearing a white coat over his scrubs at 39%. Third place was the doctor in scrubs at only 27%, and the least preferred was the bare below the elbow image at 13%. To explore preferences results a little further, there was quite the gender differential, with 73% of women preferring doctors in white coats, and only 27 of men having a preference for white coats. So I guess it's true that women do like men in uniform. Now, what was really interesting about the study, however, was the second part of the study. After the initial preferences were documented, all the patients were then educated to the fact that white coats may theoretically increase the rate of infection transmission. And when asked if this new information would change their mind, the majority of the patients responded that it would not change their preference. And further, nearly 90% of the patients responded that this new information does not make them feel less comfortable with doctors wearing white coats. And as a matter of fact, the researchers suggest in their conclusions that patients feel a sense of comfort and confidence when doctors wear white coats. Now, this is only one study in one particular place in the United States, but this study does clearly demonstrate that patients like it when we wear our white coats. So wear your white coats, your clean white coats, with pride and a sense of duty until new scientific evidence proves that we shouldn't. Thank you very much. <laughs>